Coming up next on In the City, the Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department has started a new rehab program. We'll tell you all about it. Then Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation is gearing up for the 4th of July celebration under the stars. Also, Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue share their tips on grilling safety. And finally, are mosquitoes and ticks bothering you? Learn more about how to combat pests this summer in our health report. All this and more coming up on In the City. Welcome to another edition of In the City, your source for what's happening right here in the city of Murfreesboro. I'm your host, Fadia Patterson. The Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department has been replacing and repairing water lines on public property for years. Now they are starting a new rehab program on private property. The Water Department's engineering manager explains. It's our private sewer lateral uh, rehabilitation and lateral, by lateral I mean the private portion of the sewer service, right. which is basically from the property line to up to the house. And um, we uh, are starting to rehabilitate and replace, if necessary, those lines to uh, get out I&I, &I, which is infiltration and inflow, which is basically groundwater that comes into the sewer system. We have our system broken down into 19 different basins. and. With those basins, there's 19 flow monitors that monitor the flow in the sewer system. And each year, we get two different reports from the company that does our flow monitoring for us. And from those reports, it tells us which of those 19 basins is the worst basin for infiltration and inflow and uh, allowing groundwater to come into the system. And we feel like that this private lateral and private sewer service rehab is just the next step. We're rehabbing our portion to get the groundwater out, and now we're going on to the private portion to try and get the groundwater out of the sewer system and keep it out. We are only going into the area where we have done sewer rehab on the public portion. Uh, we are uh, using those areas and going to the private portion. And then we notify the property owner by letter uh, that letter kind of explains what we're doing. The property owner has to also sign a hold harmless agreement. If they sign the hold harmless agreement, then that will allow the, the department to come and make the repairs. If they won't sign the hold harmless agreement and they don't want us on their property to fix it, uh, then we require that they submit us a schedule for them to make the repairs on that at their own expense because right now the department is funding all of the expense to replace what's on the private side. Most of the sewer lines even up to the house are clay um, and our, per our policy if it's a clay line and we know we have a defect on that line then um, we will go and replace it all the way from the property line clean out all the way to the home uh, with new PVC plastic pipe. And uh, that, that uh, newer pipe, you know, has better gaskets and will keep the groundwater out. This is our first area that we've started rehab in. And it's because that we have rehabbed the mainline portions that are public and that we maintain. Uh, per our policy, the only areas that we can go into are areas where we have done sewer rehab in the past and, and stick to those areas and we'll be moving forward to areas that we have also rehabbed in the past and be doing the same thing. It's, it's not something that we can, you know, get a phone call from a homeowner that says I'm having problems with my sewer service. Uh, that's not something that we can do per our policy. If you've got questions uh, about the, the uh, guys out here working on the property, you can call our operations and maintenance department for questions 848-3218. Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation has some information about the upcoming 4th of July event celebration under the stars that will make your experience more enjoyable. 
the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department has a whole slew of activities available for everyone on July 4th. We start out with the Rock the Pool Party at the Sportscom Outdoor Pool at Borough Beach. It starts at 10 a.m. and runs until 4.30 p.m. and they will have music and games and activities and just a whole lot of fun at the pool. And then following the Rock the Pool Party, we have the start of the celebration under the stars with family games and activities from 5 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. And we'll have a variety of new carnival style games. Every year they try to change them up a little bit, put something different so there's something new for everybody each year. And of course they'll have a variety of inflatables which have been uh, quite popular in past years. So we'll have those family games and activities and then following that the uh, Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department at 8 o'clock will start with the presentation of the colors and then the Murfreesboro Symphony will play and then at 9 o'clock we will have the professional fireworks that start run they run about 15 20 minutes it's a great display for everybody to come out and see out there at McKnight Park where they can sit out in the field with their lawn chair their blankets whatever and just spread out and enjoy the day and be able to watch the fireworks in a safe fun environment for families individuals anybody who wants to come out part of with all those people in one location, there's parking issues. <laughs> and uh, there will be parking in and around Sportscom. Of course, if you come to the Rock the Pool party, you can definitely park up close near Sportscom, near the outdoor pool. If you come into McKnight Park on that second entrance that runs along Airport Road, they'll park them, start parking them in the back towards the soccer fields, but they won't use that very back lot. And then they'll start parking them in the grassy area between the road and the Airport Road fence. And there is quite a bit of parking in there. And we'll have people directing traffic and whatnot. Then at 5 o'clock p.m., Rover will come out. And they will do routes throughout the area and pick up in nearby parking lots. Because we really don't want people trying to walk across Memorial Boulevard or DeJarnet Lane. So Rover will be making its rounds. And the Rover route will start from McKnight Park, left onto DeJarnet Lane, and stop at the various parking lots to pick up people. It will then turn left onto Memorial Boulevard, right onto Iron Gate, right onto Wendellwood, right onto Haynes. Then it will cross Memorial back onto DeJarnet and right back into McKnight Park. And then it just will keep doing continuous loops from 5 o'clock until the park's empty. Airport Road off of Memorial Boulevard will be closed. It will be closed the entire day and it will be closed during the fireworks. Once the fireworks have ended, they have a street sweeper that will go through and people that will go and check and make sure the airport road is cleared of debris. Should take about 15, 20 minutes if there aren't any issues. Then once the road's been cleared, we will let people exit out airport road following the fireworks. That way it gets that back end of the parking lot out of there a little bit quicker. And uh, we'd like to remind people that there are 10,000 people estimated to come to this event. So part of it is exiting a parking lot. And we just ask that people come with the mindset to be prepared and be patient. And uh, we'll get them out as quickly as we can. When you leave McKnight Park onto DeJarna, it is right turn only. There won't be any left turns. We'll have Murfreesboro police officers out there helping direct traffic. So we just want to warn everybody that when you leave the park, you'll need to make a right turn. To ensure that everybody has an enjoyable day out at the park, we just want to make sure that there's some safety features that everybody keeps in mind. And we're asking that people leave their pets, their grills, their fireworks, sparklers, whatnot, alcohol at home. You can um, bring your blankets, lawn chairs and whatnot. You can bring a cooler. You can bring a picnic lunch for the entire day. You can bring your dinner. You can pick up pizza on your way if you want to. We will have concessions available for sale if that's something you would prefer. For more information, contact Murfreesboro Parks and Rec Department at 615-890-5333. This event is sponsored by the City of Murfreesboro, Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department, the Daily News Journal, Murfreesboro Symphony Orchestra, Rutherford County Chamber of Commerce, Rover, Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department, Murfreesboro Police Department, and Walmart. Rita Shacklett, director of the Linebaugh Public Library, tells us about some upcoming events in June and July that you definitely don't want to miss. Lineball Public Library is located at 105 West Vine Street. Our hours of operation 
are Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sundays, 1 to 6 p.m. Here are some upcoming events at the library that you and your family can enjoy. The Lit Wits Book Club will not be meeting in June. The Genealogy Group will be meeting Thursday, June 27th at 1 p.m. Come dig into reading and beneath the surface with our 2013 summer reading programs for children, tweens, and teens beginning June 3rd. Here's what's happening at Lineball during June. Tuesday, June 25th at 10 a.m. is two-year-old story time. Wednesday, June 26th at 10 a.m. is three-year-old story time. Wednesday, June 26th at 1 p.m. is Imagine That Crew. Skits, puppets, stories, live music, and more for all ages. Thursday, June 27th at 10 a.m. is story time for ages four and up. Friday, June 28th at 11 a.m., Fossils Rock. Create a treasure to unearth, discover some fossils, and enjoy a dynamite snack. For tweens ages 8 to 12, advanced registration is required. Join us for story time at MGL Library at Patterson Park Community Center at 9 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. each Tuesday and 10 a.m. each Wednesday for preschool aged children. Activities include storytelling, music, and more. The Seniors Group meets on the first Thursday of every month at MGL. There is also a Senior Citizens Game Day on the fourth Thursday of every month. MGL is offering a free structured basic computer skills class. The class is scheduled to be from 5 to 6 on the first Tuesday of every month. Anyone is encouraged to attend and all ages are welcome. Smyrna Writers will be meeting on Saturday, June 8th and Saturday, June 29th at noon. Smyrna Library wishes to announce that due to an increase in library programming, the conference room will no longer be rented to outside organizations. For information on library programs, local events, and great information, be sure to follow the library's official Twitter account at Line Library. That's at L-I-N-E Library. The Line Ball Library would also like to let their patrons know that it will be closed for the 4th of July holiday. And if you plan on grilling this summer, you might want to take a few extra precautions to be safe. Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department's Public Information Officer Ashley McDonald has more. Hi, I'm Ashley McDonald with Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department, and grilling is one of the most popular ways to cook in the summer season, so we're here to give you some grilling safety tips. Good morning, I'm Captain Day, Fire Inspector with the uh, City of Murfreesboro. If you have a propane or charcoal grill, be sure and grill outside. Do not grill inside. Another tip is to be sure and have everybody away at least three feet from the grill except the person actually operating the grill. If you start using the grill and you smell gas, Get away from the grill and call the fire department at 911. Now Mitchell, right now we're cooking on a propane grill. Uh, you have experience with cooking on a charcoal grill. What are some safety tips you can give us for a charcoal grill? Well, I do cook on a charcoal grill most of the time and using a uh, uh, charcoal starter or a, or a small chimney, uh, you can buy at any of your local stores that sell charcoal. Uh, they work better I think to get your charcoal started and uh, get it all to a good con uh, consistent temperature until you um, until you're ready to cook and by using one of those chimneys you can use uh, newspaper or part of the charcoal bag or something like that to start the charcoal instead of using something like lighter fluid. Now if you do use a charcoal grill and you are going to use some starter fluid you want to make sure that it's a starter fluid specific to a charcoal grill is that correct? Yes and definitely want to make sure that the kids stay away from the grill, obviously because it's hot, but also from these um, fluids that you may be using to start the grill. And when, when you get finished cooking on a charcoal grill, you always want to make sure that those coals are um, cold and cooled down all the way completely. Now, Mitchell, where can you find one of these skillets? Uh, any, any of your local, local stores, uh, usually in the summertime, places like Kroger and Publix and, and uh, They'll have seasonal items out, and, and usually you can find them there. Walmart, 
Home Probably Depot, Lowe's, that, yeah, that type Yeah, absolutely. Any, any of your local uh, local home good type stores like that are going to have are going to have something like that. They're they're really nice. They keep all your vegetables together. Uh, that way they're not sliding all over the grill anymore. Sure. And this is the style of pan that you prefer because there are other styles that you may lose a few of the veggies yes, using. Yes. Th and so. this this one's got a good wood handle on it. Doesn't get hot sitting over the sitting over the grill. So whenever you do need to grab it to take it off. It's, it's going to be cool for you. All of these grilling safety tips and others are located on our website at www.murfreesboro.tn.gov. Just click on Fire and Rescue. Becky Johnson, the Parks and Recreation Department's Marketing and Special Events Coordinator, is here to talk about some great activities coming up. Becky? Hi, I'm Becky Johnson with the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department. We have parks, greenways, and facilities all across the city with lots to offer. Here are some programs and events for you and your family. Movies Under the Stars. Movies Under the Stars returns this summer with a lineup of family-oriented flicks. Bring your blankets, lawn chairs, or truck bed. Movie lists are available on site and at all MPRD facilities. Refreshments are available for purchases. For all ages, now through July 27th. Locations, Mondays, Case and Lane Trailhead. Tuesdays, Cannonsburg Village. Thursdays, Richard Siegel Neighborhood Park. Fridays, Mitchell Nielsen Primary. Saturdays, Hobgood Elementary School. The movie begins at 8.30 p.m. and is free to attend. You may also contact our main office for the list of movies at 615-890-5333. For other information, call Marlene Sewell at 615-893-5333. 2141. July 4th Rock the Pool, Sportscom Outdoor Pool. Celebrate July 4th by jumping into the crystal clear waters of Borough Beach. We will have music, fun, and games the entire day. After swimming, venture over to watch the spectacular fireworks at McKnight Park. The Sportscom Outdoor Pool is open from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and the fee is premium admission, $4 for adults, $3 for youth and seniors. For more information, contact Nikki Hensley at 615-895-5040. Celebration under the stars. Bring your families and friends, your lawn chairs or blankets, and join us for this annual community event. There will be games and activities for kids, music, fireworks, and refreshments to purchase. Please leave your pets, grills, alcohol, and fireworks, including sparklers, at home. The event is free and will be held at McKnight Park from 5 o'clock p.m. until after the fireworks display. For more information, contact Murfreesboro Parks and Rec Department at 615-890-5333. The program schedule for Thursday, July 4th is as follows. 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Rock the Pool at Sportscom. 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. Family Games and Activities, which is free. 7.50 to 8 o'clock p.m. Welcome and Introductions. 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock, the Color Guard will present its colors, followed by the National Anthem with Singer and the Murfreesboro Symphony Orchestra. 9 to 9.15 approximately will be the fireworks show. This event is sponsored by the City of Murfreesboro, Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department, the Daily News Journal, Murfreesboro Symphony Orchestra, Rutherford County Chamber of Commerce, Rover, Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department, Murfreesboro Police Department, and Walmart. 36th annual Uncle Dave Macon Days. Considered one of America's premier summer festivals, the family-oriented event annually gathers more than 40,000 people for a hearty blend of music and dance, Southern style. Events include heritage activities for children, ethnic and Southern style concessions, locally handcrafted arts, arts and trades demonstrations, a historic photo exhibit, storytelling, and Sunday gospel showcase. For all ages, July 12th, 13th, and 14th at Cannonsburg Village. The fee is $5 per day, children 12 and under are free, and Sunday is free for everyone. For more information, contact Gloria Christie at 615-893-2369. Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department presents the Off-Road 5K event. We will be utilizing Richard Siegel Soccer Complex as a trail running and walking course. The 5K is for all ages on Saturday, July 13th, starting at 7 o'clock a.m. at the Richard Siegel Soccer Park. The fee is $25. For more information and to register, contact Jennifer Joins 
at 615-895-5040. For more information about these events and programs, please pick up our Rec Connection Program Guide, which may be found at any of our facilities, or visit us at murfreesborotn.gov slash parks to download a copy. For other information or general questions, call us at 615-890-5333. Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department, dedicated to enhancing your quality of life. And mosquitoes, flies, and ticks are very common during the summer season. Rutherford County Extension Agent Mitchell Moat shares how you can better protect yourself from these pests in our health news. In Tennessee, we've got three primary kinds of ticks. Uh, uh, one, one is called the American Dog Tick, uh, one is called the, the Lone Star Tick, and then the other one is called the Brown Dog Tick. Of those three, we're most likely, we humans are most likely to come into contact with the, uh, the, dog, the American dog tick and the Lone Star tick. And, and both, uh, like mosquitoes, ticks have the capability of transmitting disease to humans. It doesn't happen very often, but it is a possibility. So that's one reason why we want to try to avoid those. And two, just like with the bee sting, some folks are more allergic. They have more of a, a, a severe response or reaction to a tick bite than, say, uh, the other people do. Uh, for me personally, a tick bite uh, is, is, is worse in terms of itching and so on than a mosquito bite is, just because of uh, the, the proteins that they ingest into your body when they bite you like that. So that's, that's a good reason to try to avoid those things. Now, <coughs> ticks have to feed on a mammal. They have to ingest mam mammalian blood in order to move on to their next phase of their life cycle. And they're going to go through four phases in their life. They start out as an egg, the egg hatches, and they come out as a larva. And the larva looks just like a, an adult tick with the exception it only has six legs where an adult tick has eight legs. And so just as soon as they hatch, they're going to crawl up on the nearest vegetation and wait for a mammal to walk by. It can be a mouse, a rodent, a skunk, a possum, uh, or a person. You know, it doesn't matter what. And so they'll latch on, they'll feed uh, until they have ingested enough blood to meet their needs, and they'll fall off and they'll go, they'll molt and go through the next stage. They'll merge as an adult, either male or female. And so then the, the, the adult, male and female, they will get, find a host, and there on that host, they'll mate and then feed, and the adult my female, she'll drop off, and she'll lay her egg mass, and she can lay several thousand eggs at a time. And so those eggs will hatch, and those little ticks come out, and they start to process all over. So if those little ticks, when they first hatch, if they don't get their blood that they need, then they won't survive to make it on to the next phase. So vegetation, uh, in areas where there's a lot of vegetation, that's, that's where you're going to find the ticks. So the things that people can do to help avoid coming into contact with ticks, number one is personal repellents. You know, use, uh, use insect repellents. Um, repellents that, that contain DEET or uh, another product called Promenone, uh, they can be effective when you spray it on your clothes, on boots and shoes, and uh, uh, et cetera, on different parts of your body. Uh, they can be very effective in helping repel ticks and keeping uh, people from uh, being bitten by ticks in the first place. Uh, and when they wear their, when they go outside, you know, avoid heavy vegetation. But if you're going to be in it, you know, tuck your boot tops or your shoes or your, uh, excuse me, your, your pants legs down inside your boots, you know, just to cut down on the opportunity for the things to crawl up your pants legs. You can wear light colored clothes and that way you can see them crawling on you more readily because they're going to be dark colored. So you can see them on light colored clothing more readily than you can on dark colored clothing. So that gives you an idea. And also, you know, check yourself pretty often. And if you've got young children, just check them very often when you're out there. Um, Keep vegetation down. You know, they, uh, by, by doing that, number one, you can kind of like keep your grass mowed. Keep it at, at, a, at a reasonable height. Uh, by doing that, you're going to allow more sunlight to get to the ground, you reduce the moisture, and if there's a heavy population of young tick larvae in there, you tend to dry them out, and so not as many of those will survive. You can decide or you can get a good idea if you need to treat an area for ticks uh, just by doing a sampling. You can go out in the spring of the year, say in April, uh, uh, April is a good time to do it for the first time, but April, May, along in there. Take a piece of a white flannel cloth, three feet by three feet, drag it across the ground. And if you're in an area that's infested with ticks, you're out to pick some up like that. You'll find them like that. You know, just drag them through the grass and through the plants and so on. You'll find them on there. If you find those ticks, and you know, sample around different places, then you can know to treat, uh, that you might want to think about treating that area with an insecticide. Um, and there are a lot of insecticides that are, that are effective in controlling ticks. Um, in areas where you've got a lot of animals, uh, dogs, for example, 
you know, that they can serve as hosts, so you're apt to have more ticks there. That's another reason for keeping vegetation down, because if you keep vegetation down, you don't let weeds and all grow up, it's not such a good environment for mice and for other rodents, and so you cut down on potential uh, 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 sources of, of uh, uh, infestation for humans because there's not as many other hosts out there. So you cut down on the tick population. Linda Burt is back to tell us about some upcoming classes, trips, dances, and other programs being offered by the St. Clair Street Senior Center. Hi, I'm Linda Burt. If you're a senior in Murfreesboro, we'd love for you to come and check out the St. Clair Street Senior Center. There's always something happening at St. Clair, all with you in mind. Here are just some of the activities we have coming up. We are currently signing up people who want to take a trip to Lancaster, Pennsylvania in October, Pigeon Forge in November, and Tunica in August. June the 24th at 9.30 is a class called What's on Your Plate? Learn how to make lifestyle changes and wise food choices as a part of your daily life. A book will be given to all who participate to help in making smart food choices. June the 27th at 1 o'clock is the Welcome Back Party. This is an annual event that is always a big party. We want to welcome back our participants for another full year of activities and welcome back seniors who have been away for a while and welcome new participants who have just turned 60 or moved into Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. Entertainment by 1 a.m. and Eric Stevens, door prizes, food, and a great time to get together. June the 29th at 7 o'clock is the Summer Solstice Dance with music by Debbie Bayless Trio. The doors open at 6.30. Bring your friends and welcome in the summer. July the 2nd at 8.30 is the Sheriff's Citizen Academy. Plan to attend and learn all about the Rutherford County Sheriff Department in this all new Interactive Citizens Academy. Ride in the wagon, investigate a crime scene and much more. Signing up for this class is a commitment for seven weeks of classes. July the 3rd at 12.30 is the Patriotic Party. Join us as we celebrate our nation's independence. The award-winning color guard from the Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department will present the colors. The singing seniors will be bringing patriotic songs and we will be eating plenty of watermelon. July the 10th at 10.30 is a trip to Loveless Cafe. Eat at Loveless Cafe and shop the fun shops on site. July the 10th at one o'clock is Bob Ross painting class for grandchildren and grandparents. The class will be painting a golden glow. Take home a masterpiece. This class is instructed by Liz Farrar. Stop by the Senior Center and pick up a leaf, the monthly newsletter, where you can find information about all the classes, trips, events, and activities of the Senior Center. We'd love for you to come and be a part of what's going on at St. Clair Street Senior Center. If you'd like to join us and sign up for classes, trips, and events, we're located at 325 St. Clair Street. And for more information, you can call us at 848-2550 or visit us on the web at www.murfreesborotn.gov. Come and join us. And in order to honor friends of the city of Murfreesboro on Facebook, we present City TV's Facebook Friend of the Week. This week, it's Art Groudon. You too can be our Facebook Friend of the Week by liking us after you type in City of Murfreesboro on the Facebook website, or you can click on the Facebook link on the city's website at www.murfreesborotn.gov. And as always, our goal here at Murfreesboro City TV is to provide you with the local city information 24 hours a day. So if you want to find out what's happening right here in your town, pick up a copy of our program schedule at the Linebaugh Public Library, St. Clair Street Senior Center, or the city's website at murfreesborotn.gov. If you'd like a copy via email, just send the request to citytv at murfreesborotn.gov. Remember, on the city's website, you have the city programs and meetings right at your fingertips, and the City TV channel is streaming live 24 hours a day at www.murfreesborotn.gov. In addition, please visit us on YouTube as we offer a wide variety of programming just for you. And follow the city on Twitter at City of M Borough TN. Until next time, I'm your host, Fadia Patterson, and we'll see you soon in the city.